Hey, fig fam. Coffee. I haven't really reached out since the holidays, but I did film during the freeze. So I want to show you guys the fig setup. And uh, then I'm going to post with this the video I took right after everything froze. Um, when we got down to about 20 degrees. Uh, but that's about it for that. Uh, but l let's check it out. And I'm gonna show you a quick updated um, this morning. So let me flip it around here. So it's been warm again. We have this coastal North Carolina, we get yo-yo winter weather. So it'll go up and be warm and then it'll be cold and be warm and cold. We don't really have a steady rate of uh, consistent temperatures. Generally, they're around the, the 50 degree mark in January in the day. And then high 30s at night, low 40s at night. So last night I was out here and the nighttime I had it at 70. Right now it's 63. I have it shut off at 70 degrees. I've wavered with the BioGreen Palma space heater. Nice heat is coming out. I've wavered back and forth between 76 and 72 as my shutoff for this temperature gauge. But in the event to save energy, because I've noticed my electric bill has gone up, uh, I dropped the temperature down to 70 at night. Because um, it'll get warmer than that in the day in the greenhouse using its solar absorption. I got all my trees going up here. And these are more like the recently rooted trees. These are the just recently rooted trees. Some of them haven't even leafed out, but I checked and they had roots growing out the bottom. And over here are the solidly growing ones that will eventually get bumped up to my three gallon pots, which are starting to happen now. I have a white triana in a three gallon pot that someone wants to buy already. And then over here, I have a yellow long neck that came straight from Harvey. If you guys ever follow Figaholics, um, that's where my yellow long neck has come from, as well as I think my Borges Oak Grease. Um, what else I got going on? My succulents are happy. This died all the way to nothing. Um, my night blooming cirrus, and now it's coming back with a little bit of root hormone. And I reorganized the whole bottom. Another item I used that I got from the Millennial Gardener recommendation was this heat mat, this heating mat. Four varieties that struggle a little bit more than others to root. And I include Black Madeira, my Col de Dames, um, Stella and Tarama actually root pretty well. But the Col de Dames and the Black Madeira types, Figo Preto, I find is more difficult to root than even the Black Madeira. Um, need a little bit more warmth. So I put them on this and you can feel the heat. It's nothing out of the uh, comfort zone that I think of plants, especially because I have this tray right here and the black also absorbs the heat, but I highly recommend it. it. Attaches into my splitter that's associated with the other two heating uh, tools. And that's my setup for the sensitive types. Over here I have trays of Celeste just to create rootstock, create easy transactions come spring because I'm in the Southeast and the Celeste is a great workhorse variety down here. It is common all over. Everyone's yard has one, it seems like, that has a fig tree. But it's, you can't beat it, they're super sweet. I always say have one in your arsenal and then proliferate your figs from there. The brown turkey does exist here, but it doesn't taste the same. Celeste actually is really sweet and does well with the rain here. So you can see what I have in my lineup. I got in the back, Black Madeira in this row, Col de Dame Blanc, White Madeira number one, Stella, 
Achano, or Genovese, um, no, Achano is uh, Paradiso Nero, I guess, back in the day on the Figs for Fun Forum. Uh, but I'm rooting that. I'm moving plants, so hack this one down, hack this one down to the ground. And it's kind of older wood, but I've seen great success with older wood. The Godfather cuttings. I grew a cutting for my parents and turned into a tree. They loved it and they brought me cuttings. And I have to tell you guys, let's talk about the Godfather. Great backstory. It was one of the original fig trees on the set of the Godfather and the garden scene where he passes away when he's playing with his grandson. Almost every single one of them has rooted for me and sprouted leaves in a short amount of time. So an easy rooting variety for me during this whole project has been the Godfather fig. It has a great backstory, a tasty fig. Nothing spectacular, I think, but nice nonetheless. And it roots like crazy. So it's a nice win when I was switching up my soil composition, my rooting composition, to have it just take off and do well. The other big rooting win was White Triana from Joe Morlay in Boston. These have been rooting spectacularly. It takes very little time, probably two to three weeks, and I get to put them in to a one gallon pot. So cheers guys, this is the quick update. And I got to flip it on the selfie mode. But I think uh, we're on our way. This has been the third big win of this video talk. Three gallon pots. So upgrading things to three gallon pots. Again, they're growing in the greenhouse. So they'll have some adjustment once they go outside in the spring. But whoever buys figs from me in the wintertime here, just keep them in a well-lit place. If you have your own greenhouse, you can keep it there. And let it do its thing as it adjusts to the world as its own tree but cheers guys i really appreciate you guys joining me on this journey holler if you have questions i need to do a fib fig propagation video exactly of what i do and then i'll run step by step i'll keep it short and succinct everything you need no more no less because that's what we want we want simple simple is key Especially when you start doing it at scale. So I really appreciate it, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.